Hello and welcome back to our Vlandian night adventures and uh, well things have gotten a little bit more difficult than last time. As you can see we actually have a Shorky here because Sturgia has just declared war against the Vlandians. <laughs> oh, as I zoom out here it actually uh, starts to look a little bit daunting as you can see. We have Batania, we have the Western Empire, Northern Empire and the Sturgians all declaring war against poor old Vlandia, not really doing much. I, I don't even know why, really, but uh, I suppose they just wanted to take some stuff back. So what we're going to do is we're going to attempt... Uh, should, I, should I try to persuade him? I, I think he's not going to join. I think he um, he's one of those guys that basically asks for a huge amount of money, and I don't think that's going to happen. But we could try. I mean, our persuasion is amazing. Like, it, it really is good. I mean, look at this. 97% chance, 95% chance, all this uh, crazy percentage chances here. And uh, there you go. We actually do gain a success there. But as you can see, it's going to be a dangerous step for him. And as you also see, there is nothing I can do about that. No money in the world is going to be able to persuade this guy unless you give him like a million or something like that. And that's going to be way too expensive for my for my pockets. My pockets are not unlimited. Thank you. Anyway, let's see if we can do something here. Oh, this is not a very good map for me, unfortunately. We're going to have some problems here, I think. I only have 40 units. Do bear that in mind. I did attempt to go back to my garrison and sort of thin it out a little bit. So in other words, uh, to try and reduce my uh, daily wages because the daily wages were getting just so far out of hand that I literally couldn't do anything about it. Oh, these guys, they're so annoying. They really are. They, they are probably the most annoying unit that Sturgia has. I wouldn't say they're the most annoying in the entire game, but I would say they are very irritating to deal with. And uh, we're going to tell my cavalry to charge in here as well. Thankfully, because our crossbowmen are good at dealing with... Uh, um, mounted units, so, you know, anytime there's, like, Kuzate Horse Archer or something along those lines, we should have a pretty easy time of dealing with them. And do bear in mind that these guys are probably the most of the combat strength that our opponent has to offer. So if we can eliminate them before the enemy even comes to us, we should have a much easier time of achieving victory. However, my horse and myself have both taken... Some, some significant damage and I'm going to have to tell my horse archers and cavalry to now come back okay infantry archers okay we're just going to move them forward here and uh, as you can see the enemy has actually gone into a circle formation I feel like that is a bit premature I don't think we're really going to charge in with just nine or however many units we have how many how many cavalry do we have I, yes, nine. Yes, there we go. I didn't see the horse icon, but uh, it's because they don't have one. They don't have a horse icon for some reason. But anyway, there you go. Um, that is uh, that's a bit problematic, isn't it? That's a bit problematic, but hopefully my sharpshooters will be able to thin them out a little bit. And I don't even really need them to do that much damage. I just need them to do a little bit so that we don't have to deal with as many units um, as we possibly can. All right, let's see here. Um, we're going to have to get these guys to come in from the side, I think, to try and flank them, maybe cause a good deal of morale damage or something along those lines. That would probably be the most most advantageous. Ooh, this is going to be problematic. Okay, we're going to have to go for it. Go for it, guys. Let's do it. And uh, let's see if I can... Oh, no, this is, this is bad. Oh, nice. Okay, whew. I was a bit worried about that for a second because I thought to myself, "Oh no, we're gonna have some, we're gonna have some problems." But thankfully, my cavalry is now heading in here as well. I'm dealing some pretty good damage, and hopefully, yeah, 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 yeah. no, oh dear, I do not want to die here, if at all possible. Okay, that's some good damage. Don't die now. Don't die now. Thankfully, the infantry does seem to be uh, getting taken down, and uh, bear in mind we're outnumbered. We are outnumbered, uh, pretty significantly actually, so being able to actually achieve any kind of victory here is actually amazing, and I'm uh, kind of surprised. 
I'm kind of surprised we're doing as well as we are. Come on, Vlandian Sharpshooters. Yeah, there we go. Take him down. Yeah, Vlandian Sharpshooters. I feel like, are they the best? Crossbowmen in the game? <gasps> Several soldiers made names for themselves in this battle. You can choose up to two. Oh, are you serious? Only two? Okay. Well, Vlandian... Wait a minute. I had to choose... Oh. My bad. I This is the first time I'm using this mod, so obviously I'm a little bit um, unsure as to the various mechanics surrounding it. But that's okay. We, we gained one. Um, yeah, I actually had to select two of them. I thought I would just select one, press done, and then select another one and press done. But no, that's obviously not how it works. I am going to let this guy go, I think... Oh, what, what, what's going on here? Why do I always... Look at this. I click on his name, and I get me. I, I, I don't know I don't know why that happens. That is a bit, a bit strange. This guy is devious, cautious, cruel. He's generous, but otherwise, yeah, nothing much. So I'm just going to let him go. Gain some, uh, gain some relation with him, gain some charm skill, and so on and so forth. And uh, we don't really have a huge amount of space for prisoners, but I am going to be taking high tier prisoners because making money is definitely something that I am interested in at the moment because let's face it when we're, we're not doing that well but as you can see I did reduce the amount that I am hemorrhaging by a decent number decent number nothing too dramatic okay so there you go we we'll just take that and the loot is going to be fantastic as you can no doubt tell the loot is going to be very very useful for us and we can now head onward I'm going to have to run pretty significantly away from this uh, area here. Oh, dear. Ah. Oh. Th 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 this might be bad. If this guy sees me, I don't think he, I don't think he can see me because I think his spotting skill is not good enough. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that, to be honest. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. No Khan, no Khan. Right, let's have a look at him real quick. Okay, is he the leader? No. Kurunag is actually the leader of the Karakurjit this time around. Okay, good to know. The caravan you are protecting is under attack? Oh! I actually forgot about that. Ah, yes, I completely forgot about that caravan quest. Well, uh, I actually had no money to continue doing it. That was also the reason. Okay, well, that's fine. That's fine. I have enough honor to be able to... Um, deal with the 20 honor loss and so on and so forth but the main point that I was having here is that I literally just didn't have enough money to continue following them because if I continued following them I would be bankrupt and all of my units would end up leaving so that is obviously not very good so I, I think that's generally the reason why I decided to go away from it which is actually hilarious okay I'm gonna have to give a thousand here to try and increase the construction time on the toll collector and we have to gonna go, go into the garrison here um, let's just level everyone up and uh i'd like to have some more sturgeon brigands if at all possible but uh unfortunately that's not going to happen so i am actually going to be taking all of the vlandians and we should generally think about taking the uh, hardened brigands as well and anyone that levels up into them because they are fantastic i'm gonna take these warrior sons as well because they level up into the sturgeon noble units which i think will be quite fun to use and we'll also take these as well and there we go i think that's good enough and then we can go into the dungeon as well and we can manage the prisoners because we're still uh, we're still recruiting uh still recruiting prisoners so we're just going to do that there we go, and uh, yeah, I think we're, we're doing pretty well in terms of our cash at the moment. Now, let me tell you, I did have zero gold. I literally had zero gold, and I was not entirely sure how I was going to do it, but I literally just ran into a huge amount of bandit parties. That was literally what saved my coin purse. That was it. And um, if you go in to fight these guys, basically you get prisoners, you get raw money, and you also get massive amounts of loot. And that loot is really making a huge difference here. Okay, so Varmond, Varmond's going to do this. There we go. And then we will do that. There we go. Okay, so that's that's looking pretty good. I, I'm 
question. Why is Servic running away from Aaron when he has significant... Come on now, fight him. Fight him. Go, go. Servic, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? I... Oh, the vote to declare war on Vlandia has failed. <laughs> uh, who, who's now declaring war against us? I have no idea, but there's a number of them, isn't there? Okay, uh, Urgil of the forest people. Let's have a look at him. No. Shamir. Shamir. Okay, so... Yes, get him. Get him. No? He doesn't want to. Okay, I have no idea what's going on with Servic, to be honest. He literally has... 83 sharpshooter units. How can you say no? How can you say no to heading in there? I have no idea. But anyway, I'm just going to take the Vlandian squires and things like that. Going to try and recruit a couple more people here. I did also do a little bit of smithing off screen as well. That obviously helped us to, um, you know, buffer ourselves a little bit. We're going to increase our spotting skill once again. We're also going to probably be increasing... Should I increase social again? To increase my charm skill even further. Uh, uh, it seems like even in version 1.4.2, they still have not added in a trait uh, for the 250 skill level. But uh, that's uh, that's actually fine. That's not a big deal. So we're just going to level up social skill once again. Because I'd like to get to this point. Because gain one influence per day. Or when you visit your own settlements. Ugh. These are both not exactly useful. But getting more charm skill is always good, I guess. Anyway, um, yeah, apparently now my castle is under siege. I wouldn't be surprised if this actually gets taken, and I personally don't really mind. I mean, I'd like to be able to take out the prisoners there. Hopefully, oh, yes, Servic's going to go in. Let's do it. Come on now. Come on, Servic. Let's do it. Oh, no. Olek is also here. Oh, yeah. So now this is, this is problematic. Look at this. I feel like this... I feel like the Vlandians are having some massive problems. Absolutely massive problems. Okay, Yorick, Yorick. Let's have a look at Yorick real quick. Okay, is he the leader? He is. He is actually the leader, but I would highly doubt he's going to join us. All right, so we have a little bit of a situation here. So on the one hand, I actually wanted to um, uh, speak to Yorick. Now, here's the thing. As far as I am aware, the new way that um, version 1.4.2 does things in terms of persuasion and your opportunity to do so, um, they have severely limited what you can do. So if there is a vassal on the way to an army without even being in the army, you're not able to speak to them and persuade them. That's as far as I am aware because I've seen uh, a few people talking about that um, in various places, forums, and so on and so forth. And generally, I don't agree on that. I've already, I've already told you my opinion on that whole thing. Um, I feel like it kills a lot of the sandbox element of the game. Um, but that's, that's just me, you know. I, I, that's just my personal opinion. And uh, people can disagree with it. it. Doesn't, doesn't really matter either way. But point is. Now, if you see a vassal and they're on a way, uh, you know, on a, on the way to uh, join an army or something like that, you're not going to be able to speak to them ahead of time, and instead they're literally going to be stonewalling you. And if you are a particularly persuasive character, that's not going to work any further. So basically, um, I, I would say that that has. Uh, effectively killed any chances of persuading vassals to come over to your side with fiefs. So you can't really do it while you're, you know, while you're in a uh, warlike situation uh, any further. I, I feel like that has effectively ended that opportunity. Which, I gotta say, I'm actually really sad about. I think that uh, that was some of the most fun um, a fun activity that you can do in the game, oh, with the exception of obviously doing sieges and stuff like that. And it basically, uh, I would say, I mean, apart from obviously persuading people to join you in peacetime, which I think is still very viable, it's a still very viable strategy and everything, 
But I think apart from that, every other kind of persuasion is pretty much dead. I, I don't think you can do that anymore with... Uh, uh, unless you're, like, very successful in tracking down that one vassal that is not in an army at the time. Because, let's face it, any time a faction is at war, they're going to be in an army, you know? They're, m most of them are going to be in armies, and if they're not in an army already, they're going to be on the way to being in one. So, uh, generally, uh, I would say that that is a bit, uh, a bit dubious. I feel like the change on that... Um, I, I think charm skill, now, it, it, don't get me wrong, okay, don't get me wrong. I feel like charm skill was very, very powerful in the past. But I would definitely say that I think it is a bit too harsh to completely eliminate the chances of you being able to uh, speak to someone and basically be able to persuade them to join your faction. And... That's also something that could be tweaked a little bit here and there. Basically, it could be... I mean, like, like for example, now, Yorig doesn't have an army to go to, right? So, generally, I could speak to him now, and I could potentially try to persuade him. But here's the thing. If I'm not able to persuade him, he's going to be in a battle with me, and I can't win against that. There is no way I will be able to win against that. So, that is problematic. I could send a messenger, however. So... Let me see. Let, let, let me see if I can do that. Let, let me see. Maybe that would be possible. It's only going to cost me 100 gold, and hopefully he will not join another... Oh, really? Instantly? That was fast. Something i like to discuss. Oh, okay. So there you go. You can do it this way. Okay, so look at this. 100% chance. Yeah, crazy good. Maybe they've actually changed um, the percentage chances for um, persuasion to actually work. Because it used to be that persuasion was very hard to use, uh, at least initially. And yeah, this is a dangerous step, however. He's not going to join us, of course. That is to be expected. No, yeah, not a problem, Yorick. Not a problem. But thankfully, because we sent a messenger, we now don't have to worry about being in combat. But I don't, I don't think the messenger thing is a default option. Is it? Is it a default option? I'm actually not sure about that. So uh, you can, by all means, correct me if I'm wrong. I do not know whether it is part of the base game or whether it is a uh, Diplomacy Fixes thing. It might very well be a Diplomacy Fixes thing. So anyway, uh, I'm going to see if we can maybe try to persuade some of these guys because they have just disbanded from their army, which is perfect. So uh, let's uh, go to Dysporion. Dysporion. Let's send another messenger to him. There we go. And let's see. Let's see. Hello, Dysporion. Okay, so I'd like to potentially persuade... Look, see? see what, what? Why? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this, Mr. Dysporion? Come on now. We must take the ring to Mordor. Uh, okay, never mind. All right, so Dysporion obviously is in an army for some reason. I... I don't know how that is even possible because as you can... Oh, he's follow Ah, he's following uh, Apis's army. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Good to know. Oh, well, never mind. Yes. Um, so that's also a bit of an issue, as you can no doubt tell. The fact that as soon as they get out of an army, they then get called almost immediately into another one. So I feel like there might be um, some maybe a cooldown or something like that potentially and as it, again i will not listen to such matters while i'm in an army so you're never going to be able to really persuade people um to join you at this time i i think they have uh very much killed the persuasion attempt thing which is sad i feel like it is quite sad but generally you are going to be able to send people and if they're not in an army then you can of course try to persuade them then but most of the time they're going to be in an army, so. A bit, um, a bit disappointing, because I very much enjoyed the whole persuasion mechanic, and it seems like the persuasion mechanic is now done. I don't think it can actually be done any further, uh, unless you're in peacetime, of course. I think it is going to be too tedious otherwise, and who wants tedious gameplay? 
I don't think anyone wants that. So I'm not going to really try to persuade people any further unless I completely see them by themselves and they're not following anyone. If they're not following anyone and they're traveling somewhere, that means they're not in an army and then we should be able to have a pretty decent time of things. Now, the reason why I entered this battle right here is so that we can potentially get some more distinguished champions and um, yeah, hopefully I can redeem myself from the earlier faux pas that I made. And otherwise, um, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see if that is indeed the case. Because these sharpshooters, they definitely deserve it. There's 50 of these guys and we're not killing any of them? Are you serious? Come on now. Yes. I'm being, I'm being shot by stones. Surely I cannot be killed by such feeble projectiles. Wow. Never mind. They're actually not that feeble. They're pretty significant. <laughs> they are pretty significant. Okay. So let me see if I can do some damage here. Yes. Yes. Get, get more used to the timing on this spear as well. Very nice indeed. Okay. I'm going to tell my cavalry to charge in. Tell my uh, horse archers or my horse archer. Because I think I only have one of those. Oh no. I actually have none. Oh, so I charged everyone in. Oh well. Yeah. Charging everyone in is perfectly fine. I don't have a problem with that to be honest. This is going to be a pretty significant victory for us anyway. So, shouldn't be too bad. Ah, there we go. Nice. Okay, yes. Yeah, there we go. Murty on Scarlet. Nice. Ooh, looking forward to seeing what they're all about. And there we go. That's exactly the reason why I went in here. Because I literally just wanted to get, um, you know, get, get a, a chance for a champion to rise up and uh, join us. Which is very nice. Okay, so I am also now going to be uh, taking a look at some people. Um, let, let me actually, you know what? I'm going to do a little bit of stalking. I'm going to do a little bit of stalking right here. So the um, Southern Empire generally tends to have quite a few people that might want to join us. So let's have a look. Sicanus, Joron. I think Joron might actually join us for free. So I'm going to send a messenger to him. And we're going to let the game run a little bit because I don't want to be in a situation where I have multiple messengers arriving at the same time because if it is indeed a mod feature, it could very well be that that will crash the game. So we'll, <laughs> we'll be a little bit careful about that. All right, let's have a look here. Increase your damage against mount with pole arms by 70% or increase your speed damage bonus with pole arms while mounted by 20%. Uh, this is another one of those weird those weird traits. Uh, I've talked about this before, where I personally feel like um, thrusting damage. The thrusting damage I already have is insane. And the same thing with the speed damage bonus. It's already really large. So I don't see the point in taking that even doing this. I mean, that damage against mounts is really not, um, not that not that good in my opinion, but it's okay. It's okay. Oh, now this is what I wanted from scouting. This is fantastic. Half food consumption and 5% faster movement in forests. I could take the desert one, but we are not as awry. So we're, we're near to Batania and having forests moving faster is just really good. So we're going to be taking that. And also we do have our friend Varmond the Bold. As you can see, he is a uh, perfectly acceptable crossbow specialist, I guess. And he's doing well. And then obviously we have Mertheon right here as well, who he... Uh, pretty good. Pretty good stats. Pretty good stats. Not going to be specking him uh, at all, because obviously we uh, just want the automated allocation to do its thing. All right. So hopefully my uh, messenger will arrive there relatively soon. And then we'll be able to speak to one of the people that we might be able to persuade. It's, it's, you know, it's one of those things. Uh, it's kind of funny, isn't it? It's kind of funny how we're just like, okay, well, I guess I'll just go over to the uh, the peaceful people and try to persuade them now. And we'll just have to take the uh, take the thieves the old-fashioned way, I suppose. You know, that's the uh, that's the kind of thing. I guess uh, generally the developers are wanting to prevent overall persuasion characters from being completely powerful you know you know what i mean that kind of thing i suppose needed to be balanced but i feel like this might be a bit too far i don't know i feel like maybe you should still be able to persuade them but maybe have like a cooldown 
on when they rejoin an army or something along those lines. So you do have a bit of an opportunity. So maybe like three days or something like that. I'm not sure. Maybe just make it a little bit so you have like an, uh, an opportunistic window to go and speak to them. That might um, make some sense. Anyway, hello, Joron. Uh, you, you're at peace with me at the moment. So I'm going to speak to you. You, you, you're currently you're, you're currently in an army <sighs> yes you're currently in an army okay yeah um, I, I think you can kind of see how broken that is at the moment because um, I don't I don't have a problem with it you see that's the thing I don't have a problem with it because I personally feel like it uh, did need to be addressed the whole uh, you know the whole uh, persuasion thing, being able to disband entire armies, being able to gain huge swathes of territory in one fell swoop. Sure. Yeah. I think it definitely needed to be looked at a little bit. Uh, but I think that this might be a bit too far. But maybe that's just me. What do you think about it? What do you think about it? Let me know. Let me know. Anyway, let's have a look at this guy. Is he the leader? I don't think so. No, it's Hurunag. I, I keep forgetting who the leaders of the minor factions are now. Okay, so what we're going to do is, because everyone absolutely hates Vlandia's guts at the moment, we are literally just going to head back to Vlandian territory, and I'll sell my stuff. Um, if my castle gets taken, then it gets taken, and then I don't really have to worry about the wages there any further, because as you can no doubt tell, we're having some issues with that. And I'm not entirely sure why my... Um, why my improved garrison mod is doing anything at the moment. I actually told it to do nothing. Persuaded two prisoners. Ah, yes. I should have stopped that because that's actually training my money by such a huge margin at the moment, which is really quite bad. Um, have they taken it yet? Can I go back there? Oh, uh, this guy. Yeah, I don't really want to do anything with that. Hmm. Okay, I'll just go back to Ox Hall, to be honest. I'll just go back to Ox Hall and uh, we'll see what we can do about selling my stuff, maybe making some weapons and things. And uh, I was actually doing pretty well in terms of my cash, but that upgrade uh, and persuasion, t uh, you know, attempts on, the, um, on those various prisoners has kind of put paid to that, hasn't it? <sighs> oh, well, never mind. This is going to give us a good amount, as you can see. Look at that, 6,200. Really nice. And we also have a huge amount of things here. I'm actually going to be selling this because it sells for 866 instead of smelting it down. And then we're going to go into the smithy and we'll smelt down all of this as well. And uh, I'm actually wondering if anyone else has smithing skill. Yeah, this guy has smithing skill. So we might want to do a little bit of smelting with him. Well, never mind then. Apparently that's not really going to make too much difference for him. Okay, so let's do this. There we go. Gain a whole bunch. And then we can also refine some stuff. And yeah, he's almost got 100, so let's get him 100. There we go. And now we can forge something. So let's actually take a look. Um, I might be able to make this. Yeah, this seems pretty good. Let's increase the size so the difficulty increases a little bit. And let's increase the... Uh, what is this? The guard a little bit. And what about this? No, that's a bit too expensive for my liking. And what about... Pommel, we might be able to change that up a little. Yes, there we go. Okay, that's looking nice. The difficulty is going to be a little bit too much. Um, but that is going to increase our skill points, hopefully a little bit faster. I'm actually not sure what the rules are regarding that. But we'll see how it does. We'll see how it does with selling it. Oh, it's actually all right. As you can see, um, it's kind of varying prices because we weren't uh, at the difficulty level. But you can see here that we can sell all of these for 9,500. Extremely good. And we're going to wait here for some time because I would like, I think, to participate in the tournament here. I think I should be able to get a pretty decent helm from this. And this is going to sell for a decent amount as well. Now we have 17,000 in cash which is actually very nice and did i just shoot one of my own guys yes i think i did well i made up for it by taking out the vlandian footman at least or at least i think so oh he won varmond that's varmond right there 
Let's take him down. Oh, never mind. Maybe, oh, maybe we can't take him down. Ooh, did I actually hit that guy? I think I did. Whoa. Okay, wait a minute. Oh, no, never mind. That was actually Imperial Sergeant Crossbow. Okay, I'm going to use the horse to try and protect myself. As you can see, the horse is currently blocking my um, my body from any potential attacks. And uh, technically, I could get on this. Can I? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, never mind. <laughs> no, apparently not. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. No. Yeah, there we go. Okay, let's... Um, Okay, let's, uh, I'm not entirely sure what I can do about this, to be honest. I can't do anything against that. <laughs> Oh, I can't do anything against that. Oh, I tried. I, I You can best bet I tried that. Oh, well, never mind. It's absolutely fine, though, because we are qualified to the next round. And I got to say, going up against my distinguished champions is really hard. It's crazy how difficult it is. Yes, very, very difficult indeed. There you go. All right, we are indeed disqualified. Let's actually see who wins. <gasps> it's against Brand and Mercy on. Let's. Shall we watch? Let's watch the round. I don't know who's who, by the way, because I I don't really have any idea um, which one is which. But oh, Brand murdered him. Did you see that? Wow, that uh, that's pretty crazy. That is pretty crazy. That was some massive damage. I feel like um, maybe the party should gain something from someone winning that, but I don't know. Maybe he should just get some stuff. Like additional experience or something like that, maybe. Anyway, let's uh, just advance everyone. I'm going to go and actually sell all my prisoners because I don't even need them anymore. So we'll just ransom all of those. Get some roguery skill. We could also get some mercenary swordsman if we wanted to, but I don't think I will do that. Um, Ox Hall, what is... Uh, we have a pottery thing right here, don't we? The pottery thing is literally the worst thing in the world, as you can see. It's literally giving me 72. <sighs> 72 income. Let's actually just take a quick look at what is around Praven here. It seems like Hog. Hog is around here. Um, I don't think there is any enterprise that takes uh, advantage of hog, as far as I'm aware. Grapes, fish, olives, wine, I guess, maybe? Olives, fish, olives. Ooh, a wine press at this city over here would be pretty fantastic. I'm going to go over here and see if I can uh, do something about that. Um, actually, no, wait, not wine. It's olives, right? So it's 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 uh, it's oil. So uh, yeah, this is this is actually perfect. So I'm thinking. Uh, can I do that though? I'm actually not sure. I, I haven't really uh, done anything like that before. So if we can do that, then that's going to be really good because basically the rule is if there are two villages with one kind of resource then you definitely want to build that kind of resource. That really does, um, you know, that, that kind of, uh, you know, build business that uses the resource. Okay, so smithy, pottery shop, what else do they have? It doesn't look like anything. Tavern. No, that's, that's, not, that's not it. Tannery, smithy, pottery shop, and that's it. That's all they have? That's kind of weird. All right, well, I'm going to go into the tannery and uh, change that over to a... An oil press, if I can. Okay, let's have a look. Uh, yes, olive press. There we go. This is perfect. Very nice indeed. Yes, I will purchase that. Thank you very much. And I might even go so far as to sell my pottery shop. Because it is, in my opinion, basically pointless. As you can see. Don't you think it is pointless? It feels pointless to me. Because it literally outputs pottery 
it it inputs clay and outputs pottery and this is the same thing with olives and, and so on and so forth so i'm actually going to sell this i can sell it for twelve thousand seven hundred. so i am going to do that right away and we're now doing pretty well in terms of our cash so i don't have to worry about it too much going forward but what we are going to do is i am going to oh, i need to return back to my to my fief i actually thought it was going to get taken but apparently it hasn't so yeah some weird stuff going on there we're actually going to attack these sea raiders because i'd like to get a potential champion leveled up Everyone, we're going to literally just command. do auto delegate here and we'll see what people are capable of doing with each other and uh hopefully we'll see some cool formations and stuff now bear in mind that these are indeed sea raiders so they do have some pretty significant oh took out the chief immediately nice but yeah they do have some pretty significant stats and um and armor and stuff like that so obviously we do have to be a bit careful and uh, hopefully we'll see a champion rise through the ranks and uh, you know what i'm actually not going to do much i'm literally just going to let my uh let my people do the work here because they're more than likely going to be the ones that will be rising up and as a result becoming champions because i think they do need to get a certain amount of kills i'm actually not sure about that don't quote me on it i'm not entirely sure what the um uh, criteria is, shall we say. Ah, seems like no one. Seems like no one has advanced. Uh, well, that's not too big a deal. Because we still gain a good amount of renown and influence and things like that. And also some good prisoners too. Very nice. And some nice loot. Alright. So, yeah. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go over to Nevia. You know what? You know what I'm actually... Wait a minute. <laughs> I'm going to do something here. I'm going to do something. Okay, so... I have I have this fief, right? Okay, so let me actually just see here real quick. I don't have enough influence. Bring forward the proposal to give this settlement to someone else. I actually wanted to give it to someone else straight up right here, but apparently they don't want it. Oh, dear. Uh, now I'm kind of sad, to be honest. Oh, wait a minute. Look at this. We almost have enough to usurp the throne. I don't know whether there's a percentage chance whether that's going to fail or not, but that's going to be super fun to find out. I am very much looking forward to that. Okay, let's go into the nearby town here. I'm just going to sell my prisoners real fast. And we're also going to sell the various things that we gained. Sell the shield and all the other loot. There we go. All right, so I'm going to go back to my castle and I will stop every single thing that the improved garrison mod is doing because as you can see, it is persuading prisoners. And while that is a very worthwhile effort in the grand scheme of things, it's just not very useful for me at the moment considering it is draining most of my, you know, most of my money, which is really not very good. Okay, so I'm actually going to spend 40 influence here. To uh, get Aldrich's, uh, Aldrich's relation up with me. I don't really care if Durthart doesn't like me at all. Um, so <laughs> hopefully he's not going to backstab us or something along those lines. I mean, he, he is generally very greedy. So, I mean, he's generally doing that all the time anyway. Aha! Hello, Shamir. I would like to speak to you. Converse. Oh, yes. Here we go. Here we go. This is going to be nice. No? I can't persuade? Oh. Oh. Okay. Uh, isn't Shamir the leader? Yes. Shamir is indeed the leader. I... Wait a minute. Can I... No. Okay. Apparently, um... That has also been disabled? I'm actually not sure what is what is happening with this whole thing because it seems like any time I try to persuade someone, it doesn't work. So I'm, I'm not entirely sure whether all persuasion has gone out the window. It might very well be that that is, in, that is indeed the case. Um, <laughs> oh, well, uh, never mind. Okay, I, I guess I'll just continue on with then. And hopefully I'll be able to get over there. Now, um, I'm hopeful that awesome... Oh, yeah. By the way, someone said that I should get a mod. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Someone said I should get a mod. And I will probably look into getting it. Um, oh, we're making peace. Oh, yeah. No, we should definitely make peace. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm actually going to support Death Art here. Even though I don't want to. I'm going to support him. 
because I generally think it is a good idea to make peace with at least one of these people because otherwise we're going to get overrun pretty fast. So I think it's a good idea to make peace in this case. All right, so let's go and um, what is it now? Garrison training. Oh, no, it's not garrison training. It's recruiting, isn't it? Recruit prisoners over time. No, there we go. Okay, so all of that is now disabled. Um, however, there are some pretty good Vlandian troops in here now, so I guess I can just take those out. And uh, we got some recruits here as well. All right. Well, I think that's probably going to be it for this episode. And um, hopefully my workshop will start making some good cash. I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Thank you.